you, including in just moments, talking to the president of the United States, Ainsley. That's exactly right. And we are two days away from the debate. We'll be chatting with him about that, too. Right, Brian? Yep. Uh, let's bring in now the president of the United States, uh, President Donald Trump. Mr. President, thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you. Mr. President, they said on a, a conference call yesterday, you said over the last three weeks you have a different feel for the campaign. You really feel like you're going to win now. What changed? Well, a lot of things. It's just going very well. I think he's imploding. You look at all the corruption in his family. It's tremendous corruption. Nobody's ever seen. I mean, that laptop, nobody has ever seen anything like that. He's gone into hiding. He's done the lid again. He's been there for a long time. And uh, things are changing fast. And the numbers at the polls are looking really good, really, really good. Mr. President, you bring up Hunter Biden's laptop. Many on the left and many in the mainstream media are suggesting this is nothing but a Russian disinformation campaign. What do you say to that? Uh, it's just crazy. I saw Schiff, Shifty Schiff yesterday get up and say, this is Russia. Yeah, I mean, he's a sick man. He is so sick. It is. We went through two and a half years of that plus. And uh, this guy, he ought to be put away or he ought to be, you know, something should happen with him. I watched him look straight at the camera and say it. And he laughs at it. They laugh in the back rooms at it. And thank goodness we have uh, John Ratcliffe that came out, the head of DNI. He said it's absolutely false. There's nothing, nothing to do with Russia. And it never did have to do. This was like with uh, Tulsi Gabbard and uh, Jill Stein when Hillary Clinton said about them. This is after the, the Russian hoax on me that they were agents of Russia. And you know what? I don't know either of them. They were not agents of Russia. They never spoke to anybody from Russia. It was the same thing. Adam Schiff ought to be investigated for what he does. He stood up, he looked at the camera, and he said the laptop conceived and dedicated by Russia. This is crazy. Well, this is a part of the interview that probably will not be played on other networks because they're not really covering this. But what if the names were changed? What if it were your name instead of Joe Biden's involved in this or one of your son's names instead of Hunter Biden? Would this be the top story on every single network? Well, you know, it would be. And, and they uh, went through and put my son in particular over a 15 minute meeting with somebody from Russia who met with everybody in Congress over the years. Everybody knew that it was a meeting about something totally different. And it, it Don Jr. went and it's so unfair. What they have done is what they've done to this country. And we're really uh, we're really hitting them back. I mean, we're hitting them back so, so hard. And I'll tell you, I watched your interview with Dave Rubin. That's true. That's happening all over. So nice. That's happening all over the country. I mean, people are in love. And what you said about Texas, don't worry about Texas. Texas with, is with us. They want to take away your guns, your oil, and your God. Okay, that's what they want. They want to take away your Second Amendment. They want to take away fracking and oil. They don't care. They want to take it away. They want to go to the Green New Deal. That's not for Texas. Texas is not going to be losing their guns, and they're not going to be losing their oil, and they're not going to be losing their religion or their God. Mr. President, so uh, you, your next chance to bring this up directly with uh, Joe Biden will be at the debate on Thursday night. And among the categories is national security. That would be your option to bring this up. Now, people in the past, presidents in the past have had siblings or relatives that are problematic. Roger Clinton had his issues. I remember Billy Carter's uh, Billy Carter with Jimmy Carter's his issues. But I think this issue would makes it relevant is what Joe Biden had to do with this. What question do you have for Joe Biden in the debate? So people don't think it's a family issue. Uh, it's more about the vice presidential issue, some would say. How do you plan on par uh, parrying that uh, issue? Well, this is far bigger than Jimmy Carter. I mean, this is a, a, an issue that's, I mean, his son walked around like a vacuum cleaner. But they say right in, look, this is the laptop from hell. They say right in the laptop that, you know, the big man has to get 10 percent. And then in another case, they say 50 percent. This is 100 percent. This is and even if he didn't get and he does get and he lives like a king, even if he didn't get all of this money and everybody's known this in Washington for a long time. This isn't surprising. Nobody's surprised by this. But even if he didn't, you can't go to China and have the sun walk out with one and a half billion dollars to manage. You can't go to Ukraine and have him get one hundred and eighty three thousand dollars a month with a three million dollar upfront payment. You can't get three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife, three and a half million dollars. 
and you have no experience, you didn't have a job until your father became vice president, it, it's disgraceful. What if he says, happening. I don't know anything about and the media, this? And the media can't cover it. The media refuses Mr. to cover it. Mr. President, it what if he just says, I, I don't know anything about that? That's my son's thing. I don't know anything about it. I hear Romania is coming up, too. So what if he says that's his thing? You know, he's a grown adult. No, Romania is coming up. But no, but they say right in there that the father's going to get 10 percent. Brian, you don't have to know anything about it. And to be honest with you, even if it wasn't, you can't. Go and go with your father, and every stop you make, you pick up a billion dollars. You can't do that. You can't do it. But he got a kickback. You know, in the old days, they used to call it a kickback. But there's no better word. The vice president got a kickback, and everybody knows it, and they've known it for a long time. Mr. President, Brian brings up the debates and how you'll address this into the debates. We want to talk about some of the changes to the debate format in just a moment. But one more on this Hunter Biden issue. Um, we've addressed that the mainstream media and many on the left are calling this a Russian disinformation campaign. You addressed that. Many of the facts now, though, are being confirmed and authorized. And some are asking, will you appoint a special prosecutor to investigate this? In fact, 11 House Republicans um, have sent a letter. They said the following, we request that the Department of Justice immediately appoint an independent unbiased special counsel to investigate these these issues that have been raised, as well as any corresponding legal or ethical issues that might be uncovered from the former vice president's 47 years in public office. Will you be doing that? Will you be appointing a We've special prosecutor? We've got to get the attorney general to act. He's got to act, and he's got to act fast. He's got to appoint somebody. This is major corruption, and this has to be known about before the election. And by the way, we're doing very well. We're, we're going to win the election. We're doing very well. If you look at all of what's happening and all of the people that come in and don't come in, you take a look all around the country. And with Texas early voting, those are our votes, too. And we're doing well in Texas. I mean, I just got a report. We're doing great in Texas, but we're doing great all over. But forget that. This has to be done early. So the attorney general has to act. Uh, Mr. President, the commission has changed the debate rules for this last debate in two days. They have implemented a two minute uninterrupted rule. So they're going to have basically a mute button. They're going to mute your microphone while Joe Biden answers for the t first two minutes and then mute his when you answer for the next two minutes. What are your thoughts? Well, I think the whole thing is crazy. This commission, I had problems with them four years ago where they uh, stifled out my mic during my conversation with Crooked Hillary. And, uh, you know, they muted my mic. They did a whole thing. They did this to me already. Uh, they modulated it at the time, and they actually had to write me a letter of apology, and they did it on purpose. Look, these people are not good people, this commission. Uh, a lot of funny things go on with them. Uh, and fra frankly, uh, Kristen Welker, who I know, and, you know, I just went through Savannah Guthrie. I knew what I was getting into, and it worked out fine, but she was out of line. She was totally out of line. And so was Chris Wallace. I know you'll defend him, but so was Chris Wallace. He was terrible. It was like two on one, and that was just fine with me. But at least they should admit that it was two on one. And the funny thing is Biden doesn't even do a show. Biden won't even go on a show. He'd get killed if he ever did the show. He couldn't, he couldn't do Chris's show. But uh, Kristen Welker is terrible. I mean, she is uh, totally partisan. Her father and mother are big supporters of Joe Biden for a long time. They're supporters of the Democrat Party. And she deleted her entire account. And I was the one that told you people about Scully. Scully was no baby either. And then he got, got caught lying with his famous, oh, they hacked my account. You know, every time somebody gets caught, they always say they hacked my account. They said, "That's here we go again with the hacking. So he, he has a problem. But Kristen Welker is far worse than Scully. But I do it anyway. I mean, I do it anyway. But this is the way it is. It's so set up. It's uh, pretty right. incredible that we've been winning for so long. Isn't and it? When you get right down to so it. So whatever the playing field is, you're a sports guy by uh, trade. you got to adjust to it. Having said that, and looking but back at the... fair. I mean, right. it would be nice to have a host that can be, you know, not necessarily right. a contributor to the campaigns uh, and to Democrats. It right. would be really nice. There are people out there. That could be neutral. Kristen right. Welker cannot be neutral at all. Well, having and said that, that, and Chris said he uh, Chris said he was neutral. But just moving on to this debate, yeah, he what, was what's for who for what, himself? What, what's going to change uh, for your strategy, well, regardless of uh, moderator format, Mike? What's your strategy? Are you using anybody different to get you ready? And after studying and, and dueling with Joe Biden once already, what have you learned? What's going to change? You're going to interrupt well, Joe us? Lies. And he lies a lot. And he'll say things that are crazy. 
and he'll think people are supposed to believe him. And they take ads and they put ads in on things that never happened. Uh, far worse than Hillary. Hillary was a much smarter person than him, but they play a much dirtier game. And she was dirty. Look, I mean, with the emails and everything else, I'm not talking about that. I mean, she she was terrible. So will you take but some of your time and correct him, Mr. President? They play a more dishonest game. They will put an ad in about something that never happened and pretend like it happened. Will you take some they of your time? very dirty players. Will you take some uh, of your time and answer the previous question like Mike Pence did and then answer their question? Well, look, I do my own debating. I do fine, and I do my own debating, and a lot of people said I won. If you look at the Hispanic, very interesting, they did a Hispanic population poll, and I was at 77%. And a lot of people thought, look, when somebody stands there and he lies, 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 I like to challenge it at the time, because you don't have time to go back. Mr. President, just to follow up on what Brian's asking, though, after that first debate, there are many who suggested if you just let Joe Biden share his ideas, America might not be too keen on those ideas. In fact, Ari Fleischer last night on hand, he said the president should interrupt less. Will you change your strategy in this last debate from your first debate? Well, I may do that. Actually, the interesting thing, they said if you let him talk, he'll lose his chain of thought because he's gonzo. And I understand that. But I also understand that as he's going down the line and issuing lies, <coughs> you know, Excuse generally me. it's okay to, you know, really attack that. But but there is a chain of thought that, you know, there are, there are a lot of people that say let him talk because he loses his, <coughs> his uh, train. He loses his train. He loses his mind, frankly. But look at yesterday. He walks out of a store and the, right. the media is standing there and they asked him, what flavor ice cream did you get? I mean, think of this. I know. They never asked me a question like that. I want them to someday, but they never asked me a question like that. What flavor ice right. cream did you get? So just, just real quick, the, the other area in which there's foreign policy uh, is not coming up in this unless you go there, unless you bring him there. And if you look at Joe Biden's foreign policy, he's the one whose former secretary of defense said <laughs> Joe Biden's been wrong about every foreign policy and national security decision for the last 40 years. He's never been asked about Libya. They killed Gaddafi and they made it a terror university. He's never been asked about ISIS pulling out of Iraq and calling ISIS the JV team, at least the president did. He never right. answered about how China moved was able to build islands and militarize them, and they did nothing. When is he going right. to be held in account for that? Are you going to go out of your way to do that? I will, but there's a lot to talk about in a few minutes. And this was supposed to be a foreign policy debate, and now all of a sudden we're talking about things that are not foreign policy. And frankly, it was a change that they made that was far bigger than the mute button, I mean, frankly, but they, they made a change, and it shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have happened. Okay, let's talk about your schedule today. You know that. I mean, this yeah. was all going to be foreign policy. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they made this change. Now we're talking about other things. All right, tell it's us. it's not appropriate. Look, the commission has lost tremendous credibility. They lost it with me four years ago when they modulated the mic. I understood that. And you look at who's right. Look at Bob Dole. He wrote a letter saying that he knows the people. And these are not the right people to have. Mr. He, he was very nice in writing that. I Mr. Must say President, Bob Dole. have you heard back from the commission? Because I know that your campaign was raising some objections about the fact that this is supposed to be a foreign policy debate. And they sent a letter to the commission. They said uh, that they agreed to the debate. Your campaign did because you agreed to focus on foreign policy. And when you look at the topics, that's not included. Well, we want the debate, and I know they're discussing it. And, yeah, I mean, they're talking back and forth with the commission. They want to have it be right. at least uh, not fair, because it can never be fair with Kristen Welker. I mean, it's not going to be fair. But it would be like Scully or like Chris Wallace. But it would be, you know, like somebody, this can't be, there's nothing fair about this debate. But that's okay. Hey, look, uh, Savannah Guthrie, I knew what I was getting into. I've been with her for a long time in terms of uh, interviews. and That was crazy. I mean, she was jumping out of her seat, but it was a good interview. We got very high marks on that interview, but she was, I thought she was totally out of control. President Trump. Out of control. 
President Trump, you've had a very busy schedule. You have a very busy schedule coming up this week. You have a rally in Erie, Pennsylvania, tomorrow in North Carolina. Um, Vice President Pence is going to New Hampshire and Ohio, Cincinnati and Portsmouth, Ohio, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, excuse me. Um, let me tie this into the debates, actually. Last night or yesterday, we heard you in Arizona talking about um, the very stark choice Americans have between them, between a potentially socialist future and economic recovery. But I want to bring this back to the debate because you told Brian there's a lot to talk about, not just foreign policy. So in this debate this week, what do you think is the starkest contrast, the number one issue voters need to consider that's different between you and Joe Biden? We've had a lot of different issues come up, law and order, the economy, COVID, shutdowns. But what's the number one stark contrast in your mind between you and Joe Biden? Okay, so many individual things, whether it's Second Amendment or uh, energy or all of these things, they want to raise your taxes, I want to lower your taxes, regulations, all of that. But the bottom line, the American dream, the great American dream versus being a socialist hellhole. Because they're going to turn us into a socialist nation. We're going to be no different than Venezuela. And I'll tell you what, it can happen. It can happen. Venezuela 20 years ago was unbelievable. And now they don't have water, they don't have food, they don't have medicine. The only difference is we'd be much bigger. But that's what it is. It's the American dream versus a socialist hellhole. And what, what, I'm sorry, Ainsley, and what specifically would you point to with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris that would take us to that socialist hellhole? Well, everything, you know, socialized medicine. They want you to go to a hospital if you have a cold, take away your health care. They want to take away 180 million incredible health care plans that people love, that people love. I mean, you can go down a list forever. They want to take away your guns. They want to take away, they want to defund your police or at least radically change your police. Look what they're doing in Minneapolis. Look what they're doing in Seattle. They want to destroy your police forces and at the, at the same time, take away your guns. So you can't protect yourself. So I understand Melania is going to join you today on the campaign trail. This is the first time we've seen her since her diagnosis with, uh, with COVID. Yeah, she's how's doing she great. doing and how's your son? Really good. She's going to be. I'm going to Erie, Pennsylvania today, which is which I love. You know, that was always a dim stronghold. And then I came along and we shook it up. Yeah, 40, Erie, you got, Erie is great. You got Erie, almost 49 percent in Erie County in 2016. Yeah. Hillary got 47 percent. What's your message to those folks and all the folks living in the battleground states? Well, just that, we're, you know, the economy is coming back so strong. Nobody ever thought we built the strongest economy in the history of the world. And then the plague came in, the China plague. And they're very, very, and we are not forgetting it. And China knows that. We're not forgetting it. But the plague came in. We closed it down, saved millions of lives. And now we've opened it up. And we don't only have a V, we have a super V. We are recovering at a level that nobody else in the world has recovered. And we went down less, and we've recovered faster. And, you know, we 7.8 doesn't sound unemployment. 7.8 doesn't sound good. But I remember your show three months ago, four months ago, they were talking about possibly having unemployment of 42 percent. Right. And we're at 7.8 and heading down rapidly. So, Mr. President, right now with cases, you have 36 states with increase in cases. You have Europe uh, all going up. Wales is basically shutting down. Nine cities in Paris are under restrictions. And the U.K. is on a virtual restriction, depending on the city, depending on the time. If the numbers keep going up and we don't want to shut down again, what is the plan to live with it while staying safe from it? Well, we are living with it, and we're having the vaccines coming out very soon. With or without the vaccines, we're rounding the turn. But we have the vaccines coming out very soon. We have the therapeutics that are incredible. I tell you what, I had Regeneron. I was not exactly feeling the greatest. And I had Regeneron. I felt like Superman a day later. And, you know, I got better very fast, very, very fast. What they've done under this administration in terms of the FDA and getting things approved, things that would have taken Brian two or three years, I got done in two weeks. And the, the FDA has been great. They've all been great. And now the vaccines are coming out. That's going to help it. But we're, we're doing much better than Europe. And, w I mean, Europe is getting hit pretty hard. We're doing much better. And we will never shut down. We shut down. We understood the disease. We're protecting our elderly, unlike what they did in New York, where they did such a bad job, Cuomo. We're protecting our elderly. We're taking care of those because they are susceptible, especially if they have heart or diabetes or problems. 
But uh, we understand the disease. No, there will be no shutdowns. Mr. President, you bring up Governor Andrew Cuomo. He's raised some questions. He says he's skeptical of a potential COVID vaccine. In fact, if you'll take a listen, we can play it for you right now what he had to say. I don't believe the American people are that confident. You're going to say to the American people now, here's a vaccine. It was new. It was done quickly. But trust this federal administration and their health administration that it's safe. I think it's going to be a very skeptical American public about taking the vaccine, and they should be. We're going to put together our own group of doctors and medical experts to review the vaccine. And if they say it's safe, then I'll go to the people of New York and I will say it's safe uh, with that credibility. Governor Cuomo saying people should be skeptical of a potential vaccine. What do you say to that, Mr. President? So he's going to put together the same group of people probably that he used to put together in the nursing homes where 11,000 people died because they put heavily infected people in with the general population. Is that the people he's going to use to help us out? No, it's not. It doesn't work that way. There's a case of a politician that's so sad. We have Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Moderna, the greatest companies in the world. This has nothing to do with government. And they've come up with incredible vaccines. And when a politician is a real low life, when a politician is willing to say that and kill people and scare people from using something that's going to be great and really solve a big problem, they ought to be ashamed of, the, of themselves. I mean, he probably listens to his brother, Fredo. You know, Fredo has bad ratings on CNN. He probably listens to Fredo too much. So let's talk about the confirmation of Judge Amy Coney Barrett. Uh, I know that the Judiciary Committee is going to vote today. It looks like it's going to go to the floor over the weekend. Uh, Chuck Schumer is saying this is too rushed. Listen to this. The Republican majority wanted to jam this nomination through before the election. The Republican majority is running the most hypocritical, most partisan, and least legitimate process in the history of Supreme Court confirmations. Instead of ramming through a Supreme Court nominee in the most hypocritical of circumstances, the Republican majority should be working with Democrats on a real comprehensive COVID relief bill. Mr. President, what's your reaction? So uh, this is a process that Justice Ginsburg said a president has four years, not three years, and we're not ramming anything through. We have a lot of time. I mean, we have a lot of time, and she's phenomenal. She's become a star. The way she answered questions, the mind, her background, her intellect. I mean, she's become a major star in this country. People love her. I tell you what, if we ever didn't ram her through, as he said, we'd have a problem because people would be angry as hell. They love her. She's going to be a fantastic justice of the Supreme Court for many, many years. And all we're doing it is during my term. I mean, I'm here. Hopefully I have another four years. But, you know, I've had three, well, by the time, at the end of the term, 300 federal judges and three Supreme Court justices. That's an incredible thing. That's a record. And there's never been that before. So, you know, they're unhappy, but uh, President Obama couldn't get people through. I mean, he was unable to get people through. He was unable to do a lot of things, to be honest with you. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes, because it's supposed to be a voting committee this week and then a floor vote the next week, and she could be through uh, right it's away go well. in November. It's going to go well, really Mr. well. Mr. President, could you bring us into the play-by-play -play of the rescue package? It's been 91 days since any type of rescue package uh, came from uh, Congress that you have signed. And we know the American people are hurting. It's been so long. If you're in the hospitality yeah. industry, which you're very familiar with, sure. they've been devastated. If you're a waiter or an actor, you've been destroyed. So now we understand that Steve Mnuchin, your Secretary of Treasury, and the Speaker have been speaking for a long time, and something could be offered as early as today. What could you tell us? Because Mitch McConnell isn't exactly on board with those negotiations. Well, he'll be on board if something comes. But, but let me just explain that it's very simple. I want to do it even bigger than the Democrats. Now, not every Republican agrees with me, but they will. But I want to do it even bigger than the Democrats, because this is money going to people that did not deserve what happened to them coming out of China. Now, to just put it very simply, we want to do it, but Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to do it. We'll see whether or not she changes her mind. But we want to do it 
because people need help and they should get help. Well, she's Even at 2.4. The economy 4. is very strongly coming back. Mr. President, she's at 2.4 trillion, and you want to go bigger than that? John well, Thune she's says. Two point, she's at 2.2. Okay. And I would like to go, I would be willing to go more because I think that. Number one, I view it differently. We get the money back, the government. It gets the money back ultimately anyway. And it's better than unemployment, and it's better than all of the other costs associated with the alternative. So I want to go, I would rather go a bigger than that number, but we'll see. But here's the problem. She doesn't want to do anything until after the election because she thinks that helps her. I actually think it helps us because everyone knows that she's the one that's breaking up the deal. Now, they are talking. Let's see what happens. But I would rather go bigger than her number. Senator Thune says he doesn't want to even go close to $2 trillion. Would you pass well, this we'll with mostly Democratic votes? Thune. Would you pass it with mostly Democratic votes? I take all the votes you could get, whether it's Democrat or Republican. Okay. Well, even if it's and a smaller you have, number. You have a lot of Democrat votes, and you have Republican votes, too. I'm but okay even, with that. Even Doesn't if it's a smaller number, why don't they just vote for that amount? Whatever they can agree to, a little because bit is better Nancy than nothing. Because Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to approve anything. Look, she's made it very difficult, very, very difficult. We're talking about money going to the American people that got hurt. And they shouldn't have been hurt. This was caused by China. They shouldn't have been hurt. And we shouldn't be punishing them. And we're punishing them because of Nancy Pelosi. Now, maybe she changes her tune. And I can tell you there is a little bit of that. And that would be a very positive thing for the American people. Mr. President, um, certainly stimulus for those who had their government or had their businesses shut down by the government by mandate is important. Right. But helping people by opening up seems to be one of the biggest economic stimuluses we could offer. I know you've had a back right. and forth with Dr. Anthony Fauci over the last 24 hours. We'd love to ask you about that. But this idea that we need to open up our economy balanced against rising cases in many states, what's the right path for us right now on opening up our society? Well, we have to open up, and we live with it, and we open up our schools, and I'm the one that got Big Ten and Pac-12 football back. You know, I got that back. That wasn't coming back, and I got it back. Hope people realize that. That was pure and simple me or whatever, but, uh, and I'm very happy. We have to open up. Now, Barron, a young man, very young, strong, he got it too. By the time I said to the doctor, how's he doing? He said, he's all better. You know, it's different. Young kids, 99.9% .9 young kids have to go back to school. They have to get back. Now, if you look at different states, Michigan, we won the case against her. The only one that was allowed to violate was her husband, okay, the governor of Michigan. We won the case. Michigan's opening up. Got it? Because you know what? The Supreme Court said it was unconstitutional what she was doing. Now, uh, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, some other states, all run by Democrats, have to open up. I mean, look at New York. It's like a ghost town. New York, what they've done to New York, it's a ghost town. I know we're Not in it. Everything coming out, crime and other problems are in Democrat-run states. Let's and I hope people realize that. Let's talk about taxes, because uh, 50 Cent says he's now going to vote for you in light of the Biden tax you mean the right because Biden says if you make more than 400000 I'm raising your taxes. What is your tax plan? Well, it's much more than what he's talking about. And I mean, he's, what he said is wor much worse than that. He's going to look at the Wall Street Journal. They just came out today just in terms of, of life, $6,500 over a short period of time. More they're going to have to pay. He, my tax plan was the biggest tax cut in the history of our country. And regulation cut, but the biggest tax cut in the history of our country. He wants to violate that. That would take away child tax credit, a thousand dollars a child. It would take away two thousand five hundred dollars. It would take away. You know something that will happen if they ever did it? Energy. Energy. Look at you. You're buying two dollar a gallon gasoline now. Nobody thought that was possible. That will go to five dollars, ten dollars. You won't even be able to buy a car. You'll go into a depression the likes of which this country has never seen, at least since 1929. Who knows? That was a pretty bad one, in all fairness. But if he gets in, what they will do is everything, it'll be a disaster. They're going to double, triple, quadruple your taxes. They actually say we're going to quadruple. To spend it on the Green New Deal, this ridiculous Green New Deal, which makes no sense, designed by, by AOC plus three, that had nothing to do, didn't even study the environment. Now they're telling us, right. you know, about the Green New Deal. No, no. What they're doing is crazy. 
and their taxes will quadruple. They're going to take your guns away. The whole thing is crazy. The whole well, plan is crazy. They this do. is the only candidate I've ever seen that runs on the basis that they're going to raise your taxes. And, you know, of course, AOC is not the candidate, but he does say his, his energy plan is the framework it was based on the new Green Deal by Senator Markey and Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, which includes retrofitting, I think, every building in the country to make it more environmentally friendly. Uh, and I imagine that they're going to go to the Pentagon to take some of that money because it's just not going to be anywhere else. So they want to take a building and they want to make the windows from nice windows to little windows. Oh, that's just fine. That was my business. I know all about construction. That's wonderful. Let's take your windows out and make them tiny little windows because you're going to save two cents on energy. These people are... This is